Hey guys, Nick here from Key Issues, and today we are doing our first video about specific characters from the boys and their comic book origins, history, and powers. But before we begin today's video, I just want to remind you guys that there is a contest. We're going to be giving away a couple copies of The Boys Volume 1, and all you have to do to enter is pretty basic. First, make sure you're subscribed. That's an obvious one. Next, like the video. And third, comment below on who your favorite character is from The Boys and why, or pretty much anything you want to discuss boys related. I don't really care. Without a doubt, one of the most popular characters in the boys' universe is going to be Homelander. Homelander is the de facto Superman clone that every single comic book universe seems to have in it. If you're writing an independent comic book about superheroes, chances are high that you have a Superman clone in your universe, and Homelander is that for the boys. Now, from this point on in the video, I will be covering some aspects of Homelander's origins, powers, and comic book history, as well as some of the stuff you've seen in the show. This contains a tremendous amount of spoilers for the comic book version of the character, as well as some of the things that occur in Season 1. So if you haven't seen all of Season 1, maybe finish it, it's only 8 episodes, and then come back. Now, I have no way of knowing if the show is going to follow in the footsteps of the comics, so kind of consider yourself warned, but based off what I've seen in the show so far, it's a pretty massive departure. Homelander made his first appearance in The Boys issue number 3, and his origins are the same that we've all heard before in the past, with tons of other Superman clones. A baby falls from the sky and goes on to become the benevolent savior of mankind. Except not that, like at all. See, Homelander isn't actually an alien overlord savior from another planet who graciously came here to save us from our own baser instincts by providing us a squeaky clean all-American image. No, Homelander is 100% the byproduct of shoddy science and a complete lack of ethics. To understand who Homelander is and why he exists, you first need to understand the Vought American Company. The Vought American is a ruthless company who values profit over everything. That's actually uh, pretty similar to our motto, though. Um, they are a morally bankrupt company that has an all-star marketing division, and they are always looking to cut corners and save money, and over the years, they were nearly driven to bankruptcy due to their own inability to produce decent products. For example, they gained a contract to make a specific type of gun for soldiers in Vietnam, but they cut costs on the manufacturing and the guns wouldn't fire. This led to an entire battalion of soldiers being ambushed and murdered without being able to defend themselves at all because all of the guns that they purchased jammed and were defective. Over time, the company became this laughing stock until they formulated a new plan. Homegrown superheroes. The Vought American Company came to be in possession of a drug created by a Nazi scientist that gave people superpowers called Compound V. The corporation started human testing on a nameless, mentally challenged woman and her baby in utero. They gave the fetus incredibly high doses of this drug, and the infant child was so powerful at birth that it killed the entire birthing team. It's also heavily implied that the woman either died in childbirth or was killed by the corporation. The child also aged rapidly to adulthood. Eventually, he had to be kept hidden with a nuclear bomb close by just to keep him in check. That child was named Homelander. In the show, you'll see scenes where Homelander is forced to fabricate his backstory. There's a whole marketing campaign that depicts Homelander as this boy named John who was raised in this all-American life with apple pie and baseball, but in reality, Homelander's name is just Homelander. As a child, he was kept under lock and key, raised in a lab, all while continuing to receive massive injections of Compound V. Vought gave Homelander and seven other children an insane amount of this drug from the time that they were fetuses. Thusly, they became the most powerful beings on the planet, the Seven, a PR group of created and controlled superheroes. Homelander's power set is, of course, very standard for the Superman archetype. Insane strength, flight, heat vision, super speed, and almost a complete invulnerability. He also doesn't have any weaknesses like kryptonite that Superman would have. Homelander was not raised from childhood to be a hero. He was raised from childhood to look like a hero in order to bring in massive revenue and merchandising potential. Being the world's greatest hero has made the Vought Corporation and Homelander insanely rich. 
Homelander began his superhero career trying to do a good job, but a lack of training and his own incredibly poor moral compass led him and the rest of the Seven to consistently make tragedies way worse. One variation of a mission you'll see take place in the show actually takes place on 9-11. The Air Force had a chance to take out the second plane that was trying to fly into the World Trade Center. Instead, Vought step in and ask that the Seven stop the plane. Homelander ended up failing miserably. Homelander, Marathon, and Queen Maeve attempted to save everybody, but when Homelander opened the door, he ended up killing everybody in the aircraft relatively quickly by depriving them of oxygen. Then he decided to just abandon the mission halfway through. When he did try to save the plane somewhat, he ended up forcing it to fly into the Hudson Bridge, killing thousands along with another member of the team, Marathon. And that's things that Homelander does when he's trying to do a good job, so as you can imagine, the things that he does when he's being selfish are way worse. For examples of these, you know the scene in the show where Starlight meets the Deep in their particular interaction? Well, in the comics, it's actually Homelander, A-Train, and Black Noir that do this. From this point on, we're going to get into some very spoilerific territory, but because of how far the show has departed from the original comic books, I feel like I can discuss this with a relatively clean conscience. Homelander eventually begins to lose his grip on reality. He starts being blackmailed by some anonymous source with photographs of horrible things that he'd done. And what scares Homelander the most is that he has no memories of even committing some of these violent crimes. One particular crime that he was told he committed but didn't remember was the rape of Billy the Butcher's wife. This led to a war between the Seven and the boys, and we don't know much about the war, but we do know that eventually there was enough carnage that a ceasefire was ordered, but Billy never forgot what Homelander did to his wife. It's actually the sole driving force that Butcher uses as motivation for his war on supers. Now, it is very different in the comic books than it is in the show. The entire last few minutes of the final episode of The Boys never actually happens. None of that is actually true in the comic books. Wanting to do good, but consistently making situations worse, the world's greatest superhero slowly spirals into madness. He went from being a super-powered asshole to a complete megalomaniac, eventually even going as far as determining that superheroes should rule the world, and he launches an attack on the White House. Homelander actually kills the President of the United States, and Butcher and Homelander are at that time presented with a very, very devastating truth. This last bit of the video is going to cover a major bombshell about another member of the Seven, so if you don't want to know, please stop watching the video right now, but don't say that you weren't warned. We learn that fellow member of the Seven, Black Noir, was actually a clone of Homelander, and the true party responsible for the majority of the horrible things that Homelander thought he had done. This information breaks Homelander, who now believes that he could have been a true hero if he wasn't so easily manipulated. Homelander attempts to redeem himself by killing Black Noir, but in the process is killed himself. Billy the Butcher then kills Black Noir, getting revenge for his family. Ultimately, Homelander served to be a case study on how absolute power can corrupt absolutely. And that is about everything that Homelander has accomplished in the comic books. Now, I actually kind of prefer the Homelander from the television show. I think he's written a little bit better, but I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comment section. Remember, as we discussed before, there is a giveaway for this. So all you got to do is like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Thank you guys for checking out this video. This has been Nick with Key Issues, and you know the motto, comics over everything.